friends, I am on the bus on my way to go meet Jamie to go to the Carl Walker Feld Line of Beauty exhibit at the Met. So yeah, just on my way. It's kind of a cloudy, overcast, I don't think it's supposed to rain, but like only high in like the mid 50s, like I said before, spring definitely left us. I think it's supposed to be back next week, which is good, but that doesn't help me right now. Ooh, there's a little out of control. So anyway, I will check back in when I get with Jamie. My eyes are watering. <laughs> I should have brought my sunglasses just to keep my eyes from watering from walking. But look me around and show you the mat here. I spy a mint baguette. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, guys, we're here. Oh, 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 wait, wait, we'll start over. <laughs> so, you go and then... <laughs> right. so I'm here, and yes, the woman in the mint baguette indeed was. Yeah! Jamie! <laughs> so we're waiting. Our time is at 10.30. I think we're supposed to wait until 10 30 because I think there's I think there's a group I think yes. it's a group of us so anyway and it's cold or I think it's cold Jamie is ready to like break out a bikini so anyway <laughs> hey friends editing Lisa here apologize for my voice I am still getting over being sick but I was editing this video and unfortunately the docent who led us through the exhibit that you're about to see which is the Karl Lagerfeld a line of beauty which was is currently open at the Met, was a little quiet. She's very sort of soft-spoken. And so I tried to boost the audio as much as I can on my side, but unfortunately I can only do so much. So I'm gonna ask that you increase the volume of the video from this point on after I'm done speaking to you so that when you do hear those parts where I'm having her speak, that you can hear her better and then what I did on my side is the parts where there is music, I adjusted the music down in volume so that you you won't have to adjust your volume at all. So just turn up the volume so that you can hear her well, and then you won't have to like turn down the volume when the music starts. You should, it, it should all just flow. It should just be one seamless Thing throughout. So hopefully that makes sense. I really, really hope you enjoy the exhibit as much as I did. It was an incredible experience, especially to be able to see it in a very small group setting before anybody else got to see it. So with that, enjoy the exhibit. inspirations and his ideas um, and we also have here his dressing gown that he wore when he liked to sketch. It was a very messy process with a lot of pigmented products like you can see his favorite wax pastels and also if you take a close look you can see Shuimara eyeshadow palette which he also liked to use for pigment and color and so to avoid the pigment getting on his sleeve he would wear a dressing gown. So to keep his sharp eyes.
so he took the scraps of all of the other pieces from different collections and put them together to make this sort of wild concoction, which static, you can't really appreciate the full movement, but it's like a floor length fringe. If you take a look at the sketches here, and if you can find footage of the runway, you'll see models twirling and, and the fur fringes flying as well, which is really amazing to see. Um, this coat on the end as well is very special because it simulates fur, aside from the, the mink one fur the collar. End. Exactly. It is actually not fur, right? Only the, only the collar is mink fur. Mm -hmm. But the body of the coat is made out of silk chiffon and georgette, which has been cut and meticulously embroidered onto the ground fabric um, to create you know, the, the imitation of fur. Wow. So you have the full range of Fendi's technical capabilities. With and after um, this competition, he got his first real job in fashion at Balmain as a design assistant working for one of their boutique labels. Um, and after that, shortly after that, he became the creative director of Patu, which was the first house that he was the creative director of. Notice as we walk through points of intersection between the Serpentine and the Strait. And that for us really captures Lagerfeld's multiplicity, his innate contradictions, like I mentioned personally and professionally, um, and his sort of never ending source of inspiration. special piece that he designed with Fendi um, for a competition in the mid 80s to redesign um, Rome's policewoman uniform. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very lucky to have that one as well. Wow. And the piece in the middle, this explosion is from Chanel and it reconciles the romanticism with its skirt that sort of echoes back to the 30s and to Chanel's evening gowns of that era with a top that's inspired by a Hussar military uniform and reconciles the formality of both evening wear and, and uh, sort of the formal austerity of, of military uniforms as well. can still be found in, in Indian dress as well. And you see two looks on the top here left from his Paris Bombay collection. Um, and in his Metier d'art collections that were for Chanel, um, they were all themed based on the locations that they were staged and right. took uh, inspiration from the regional and cultural dress of those places as well. <laughs> line and on the right the futuristic line and um, Lagerfeld loved the 18th century as I mentioned before so you see a lot of um, pieces here inspired by the panniers of, of 18th century dress and as well as 16th 17th and 19th century dress as well um, and interestingly enough even when Lagerfeld was looking back, it wasn't a linear sort of dialectic of inspiration. This piece here on the right, the top right, is called Attis, and it's inspired by 18th century men's ballet costumes. Mm -hmm. And it is also inspired by a costume that 
Coco Chanel made in the 30s for a ballet dancer, Serge Lafar, which you can see in this label here, this image. So he's referencing the 18th century, but also the 1930s and Chanel at the, at the very same time. And on the futuristic side, you'll notice, especially on the top, a lot of 1960s era sort of space age inspired futuristic looks. So even though he's looking forward, he's also looking back at the 1960s as well, which he was alive for the space race and designing in that time as well. And so inspired by that period. here on this wall, and also the countercultural line, which highlights Carl's sort of magpie-like nature of taking different inspirations from streetwear um, and bringing it into the couture um, context as well. beautiful sort of 1950s inspired uh, pink silk thigh dress and added a quilted biker jacket and uh, weightlifter belts and yeah. the chains that you know come from a hip hop ornamental line and on the right it's juxtaposed by the structural line and so the ornamental line really gave us a chance to explore Lagerfeld's identity as a connoisseur an art connoisseur and an art collector and he loved decorative arts of the 18th century, which you'll see sort of represented here on um, surface details. To leave, already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking, we'll get away to a place where we don't know. We'll get away. This is what we waited for. These <laughs> silk flaps, silk flowers, and um, applique feathers to create these, these incredible ensembles. This dress in particular is made of over 2,500 um, silk camellias, each flower taking about an hour and a half to create. Um, so it's a real, a real collaborative effort and an incredible amount of work embedded into this. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. I'm done living life with the lights out. Die with my own doubts. Be free. We win. The geometric or the graphic line, which shows Lagerfeld's love of black and white his love of typeface and branding and logos. You'll see in the middle this Fendi ensemble, which um, echoes the double F logo that Carl actually created one day simply just sketching. And he made that double F logo, um, which stood for fun fur, which sort of went into his ideology of, um, of transforming state or established uh, conventions and all sort of subverting them. Um, and also we've, Looked at.
collection um, is a satirical gallery, and it explores Lagerfeld's characteristic wit and sense of humor and his love and penchant for visual puns. And in his own eponymous label, as well as for Chloe, he really explored this, um, this sense of humor and this incorporation of sort of surrealist uh, trompe embroidery to achieve this effect. So here we've got, for Chloe, a guitar, two electric guitars, and a violin, which um, placed on the body sort of play with this inter in inter interaction between the decorative art design and also the form of the human body. And again, we have this love for the decorative arts of the 18th century with these candlesticks and also the elevation of, of the ordinary material line, part two. And if it isn't obvious, it pulls on Lagerfeld's uniform that's created for himself. This sort of black and white dignified uniform that he developed and, and kept until he died. Um, and so in addition to his own uniform that he wore himself, like Coco Chanel, he had a sort of self-referential quality that he brought to the Yes, and then I wore. I, I decided to wear. It's it's Fendi. What are you from, wearing, Brandon? Tell us. We're, yes. Today we're wearing Fendi. It's COVID collection. It literally okay. was like the collection that came out in February, just before like the whole entire lockdown. world shut down. So. So cool though. Yeah. Looks so great. Yeah, was like so on trend right now. I know. So this is like yeah. perfect. I thought it would be a fun little you know fisherman kind of look. We love but it. 